In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up Slack for your digital marketing agency. Let's jump into it. My name is Hayden Ralph, CEO and founder of Jump Forward Media, digital marketing agency specialized in aesthetics. We're currently at 180K a month in revenue on service fees, that's no ad spend included. And my goal is to save up to buy some more surfboards. So if you wanna help me out, hit that subscribe button, uh, lock into the channel, cause I'm trying to buy you know, a really nice surfboard and those things aren't cheap. So lock in and I'm gonna do a quick training here. So here we are inside my Slack. And you can see how I have it set up on the left-hand sidebar of organizing everything based on numbers. The reason we do this is because Slack is based on alphabetical or numerical number, uh, or sorry, order. And so in that case scenario, we wanna label everything the right way in order of most important to least important. So starting off here at the top, we have this channel called Team Wins. Now for my agency, this channel is all about sharing wins. So if you upsell a client, if you sell a client, if uh, they get really good results. Um, then we're going to reach out to the clients, share those testimonials, share those screenshots here with clients that are being successful or with us being successful as the marketing agency. So for example, uh, Lucy shared something here. I might have to blur it out. I might not. Um, but it's basically like, Hey, we got 50 appointments this month and it's only the 19th of July. Again, today's the 22nd. So that's the most recent one. Then I put in here, yo, should we get a Google review? Uh, cause we like Google reviews and we're trying to get to a hundred. I think we're about 60 something, but, um, anyways, long story short, going on to the next channel, we have onboarding call scheduled. This is, uh, an automation that I built from GHL go high level. If you're not familiar to Slack. So every single time there is a onboarding call scheduled, it goes into here and notifies the team. This is really just updates. As you can see, we don't really talk too much in here. Uh, we just have all the clients that we're signing, uh, and all the onboarding calls that we are getting. So that's the next one. This is a channel that's kind of been archived. It's called launch call scheduled. We're trying to think about, do we want to re add this in? Do we not? We use it a little bit. Um, but again, uh, it's kind of, kind of not really needed going on to the next one. We have Leadsy. Now, if you don't know what Leadsy is, um, I'll pull up a little screen share on the screen here of Leadsy. It basically allows you to get access to Facebook ads, Google ads, WordPress, and a whole lot of other things just from a link. So it's very, very beneficial. Um, I would highly, highly recommend this tool. And then we pay for the more expensive version, which is just 99 a month. And that allows us to connect it to Zapier. And so every time we get access to a client's asset, let's say it's a Facebook meta account, or let's say it's a Google ad account that will actually shoot into this channel and let the team know, Hey, we just got access to this. Right. So very, very helpful. This channel, I'm not going to show. This is just conversations between me and my executive assistant. Um, I can actually show it here. It's basically going to have a lot of my meeting recordings and then any tasks that I have from my executive assistant will populate in here, which is really, really helpful. Uh, the tool we use for meeting recordings is called fathom. If you don't know what that is, it's an AI, um, video assistant. I'm sure you know what it is, but if not check it out, it's called fathom. Uh, definitely super helpful. So it records all your videos. And then if you pay for the upgraded version like us, you can use Zapier. And so we do that for our team. So anytime somebody records a meeting, gets zapped into a spreadsheet, it gets zapped into our training. Uh, and we always keep those meetings for uh, meeting rhythm internally. Next is our team channel. This one is very, very simple. This is just where we say good morning. This is where we share new things. Like for example, I said, Hey, I got invited to this webinar. You guys should register and sign up. Pretty cool. Next is our assets channel. I'm not going to show this one, um, but we pay for the upgraded version of Slack as well, which I don't really recommend because you can use Slack for free for a long time. However, the reason we do it is because we keep all our assets inside of Slack because Slack has a really cool search feature. If you can see up here. So in this jump for media assets, literally every SOP, everything we train on, everything we do, we always drop the links in the assets channel. And this allows us to have a search functionality in Slack for if you ever need to find something. So I need a website login. I need this, I need that. I need access to this client. I need to know the update on this or whatever. You can search it in here and we keep a very updated record of that. Next is team leaders. So this is my executive team right here. We call us jump Forward media team leaders. Um, very, very helpful. And this is where all the communication happens with our exec team. Next we have a uh, client onboarding. One of my favorites. I'll show you that in a second. Onboarding chat widget is something that I literally just implemented. Don't think I'm going to keep it. I literally put an AI chat widget on our onboarding. If clients have questions, a couple of clients have used it. It's not that helpful from what I've seen. Our onboarding is pretty straightforward in terms of how that works. Oh, another thing, if you guys want to see 
how to uh, how to onboard a client the most successful way possible and to see all the automation we've built in terms of they go through the funnel, they fill out the onboarding form, they book a call, they do this, they do that. If you guys want to see that, comment below. I'd be happy to film a video on how we onboard clients. It's actually really, really simple, really straightforward, and it's all done through GHL, and then everything gets sent via Zapier or via GHL and Slack integration. But I'll go over that in another video. If you guys want to see it, again, comment below. So client onboarding. This is my favorite and probably one of the first uh, Slack Zapier integrations that I made. So essentially what happens here is we have a lot going on that I can show in another video, which is like workflows and different things that my uh, COO made, which you can see all these new things. These are all workflows that you can build inside Slack. So we're trying to leverage Slack as our full on project management tool. So we're not using other project management tools at this time, like Notion and other things like that. We used to be using it, but then it was segmented. So now we have all our workflows and everything built into here, which you can do very easily. The workflow builder is a little more complicated than GHL, but it's extremely helpful. So whenever we get a new onboarding form, I'm gonna blur this out, but essentially this shows us all the information that the client sent in on the onboarding form and allows the team to know, hey, this is a new client that just signed. Here's all the information. These are all their answers from the onboarding. And here's what we need to do. Then what happens is once that form gets submitted, we get this uh, update me form here and I fill out basically a checklist after the onboarding call and it updates the team with everything, gives everyone their tasks and they're ready to go. So very, very cool channel here. Um, again, and there's so many things that you can build out inside Slack. It's just very, very helpful. Next ones are marketing team, graphics team, account management team. Uh, these are all very self-explanatory. It's for the communication within the marketing team, the graphic team, and the account manager team. Um, like I said, very to the point, very straightforward, um, very simple, but there is workflows built into them. Now, I'm going to make this an overview of how my Slack is set up. If you guys want a more advanced call, um, be sure to let me know in the, or sorry, advanced video. Be sure to let me know in the comments below because I'd love to make one and get my COO on here who actually created all the workflows and everything like that. I personally didn't do them, so that's why I'm not showing them is because they're kind of complicated to be honest. But I can show you guys that if you want some more advanced training on that. So marketing team, graphics team, account management team, you can see kind of everything that goes on in these channels. Um, next we have our sales team. So this is like sales updates, anything like that, so on and so forth. So you can see um, just wins that we share in here. And then also we have conversations around like agreements. These are the email templates. I'm sending all those type of things. Then we have sales team book call. Again, this is the same thing where it's integrated into GHL and then all our book calls go into here. Ticket requests for backend, love this channel. So I trained all of our account managers, uh, all the people that are meeting with clients on a daily, weekly, monthly basis that they have to submit ticket requests for problems with GHL problems with this, problems with that, things that they need help with. So these are all the workflows that I was telling you about that our team creates. So these are things that you can do in Slack, which not a lot of people do. But for example, type in the client's name, the priority, the details, due date, uh, if you wanna upload an image or anything like that, and then you select what pod you're in. So we haven't got into the pods, but I'm gonna show you that in a second. It's very, very cool. Continuing down, we have Facebook ad copy. Whenever you're done writing Facebook ad copy, you drop it in here. As you can see, all the ad copy, so on and so forth. We have new client signed. This is every time client signs an agreement, they get updated in here. This one I love. Now this one's more complicated. Again, I can make another advanced tutorial on this if you guys wanna see this. I basically set up an automation in Zapier saying whenever an email is received to my Gmail account, which is what's hooked up to Facebook, and it has the subject line, your ads are rejected, then it populates in here. So we know instantly whenever an ad gets rejected for one of our clients, really, really awesome. Um, automation there. Then we have clients offboarding. Again, this is a channel whenever we lose a client, offboard a client, it gets sent into there. And there's some automation that happens as well. So the back team can offboard them, uh, delete all their accounts that we have, export all the leads, send it to the client. There's an SOP for even offboarding, right? So we always think about onboarding. What's the offboarding experience? Do you have an exit interview with them? Do you have all these things set up? Because you guys got to be thinking about these things as your agency uh, grows. 16 marketing ideas, 17 uh, credit cards. This is only for billing. So only a couple people have access to this. Here's another automation. It's called ATP status update. Um, again, this is when 
you ever get a A2P you know, failed or anything like that, it will automatically send it. And again, I do a lot of these um, automations, I guess, through Zapier. And so whenever we have uh, A2P registration, which is through Go High Level to register the phone number, it gets sent back in here. It's really, really helpful. Same thing as SMS failed. We got video editing, HR payroll. Um, this is for a client, employee applications, so on and so forth, right? Well, let me get down to some of the better channels here. We have a lot of like Jump Forward Media Billing, Book Club, Meeting Recordings. We kind of have a lot, too much. You know, you guys don't need this many until you get bigger, then you can keep adding, um, you know, different channels based on what you want. I love JFM Workouts, basically a company culture type of channel where we post all our workouts and things that we're doing on a daily basis. Now, here's the cool shit. We separated our agency into pods. And what a pod is, is essentially one account manager, one graphic designer, and one media buyer, right? And so everyone has a list of their old clients and these are of their own clients and their pods. And we break it down into five pods. Each account manager manages anywhere from 25 to on the high end 75 accounts. So we're able to scale this way. And so whenever we're maxed out, we know we need to hire for a new pod and we kind of continue it that way. So pods are really, really helpful as you get big. You don't need it in the beginning, but as your agency starts to grow, you start managing a lot of clients. You definitely want to break things down to pods. Shout out to Stevie. Learned this from him. Uh, love the whole pod setup. It's beautiful. So I'll show you an example of what a pod looks like. Um, again, there's so many different workflows that our team has built out so that whenever we have a new launch or we're changing offers for a client, it all gets updated here. Everyone gets notified and it's just really, really, really helpful to have everything organized like that. So we have all these different types of forms that we fill out. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of them. So billing, slow client, upsell. Uh, we have like upsells, backend ticket request, so many different things. And that's how everything gets organized. So we never just have people just sending out like, hey, can you do this task? We systemized everything, uh, which is really, really helpful. Moving down further, we have some basic ones for our team, requested time off. Um, we do unlimited paid time off at our company. Um, kind of the expectation is I don't care how much you're working. I care about the work getting done and you performing those tasks at like a very, very high level. So that's what we're doing in this. Uh, very straightforward, very simple. We have taking a break channel, um, applications, and then we have some other ones uh, that are kind of newer that are all down here. So ones that we're kind of testing out and working on, we put a Z in front of it. So they show up at the very bottom. Uh, but for the most part, that is how our Slack is set up. And if you want a much more detailed version of this, uh, let me know in the comments. Again, I'm only going to do it if you guys really want a video like this where we can break down exactly how it all works. And I can bring on my COO who actually made all of the automations and everything that we utilize inside Slack. So if you guys want to see that comment below, but that's pretty much complete overview of how my company runs using Slack. Uh, again, thank you for watching this video. If you want to be on this journey with me to buy a new surfboard, get to 200K, 250K here in the next couple months, let me know. I'd love to buy a surfboard. So if you want to see that journey, stick around and I will see you guys soon. Thanks for watching this video. Peace.